Hello everyone, welcome to Stochastic Calculus for Finance 1. This is now section 6.4 where we're talking about uh, four measures. And here what we're going to do is we're going to price a couplet using this change of measure technique from the risk neutral world to the four measure world. Alright, enjoy. So first what we can do is we can try to remember the, the example that we had before where we priced the cap in the risk neutral world, right? So in that example, we, as before, as we have seen before, we had a binomial interest tree. And on this tree, we were able to price things like zero coupon bond, etc. Uh, for example, we were price, able to price a zero coupon bond that pays $1 at time three, right? And found, for example, it was four ever seven. And we're able to do them some math to price lead the specific cap that that had that that pays a strike price k of one over third, right? And specifically, uh, when you look at this last expression of this cap, this last expression actually uh, was actually the price of the couplet that pays at time three, right? And so we have seen how this uh, uh, we have we have seen this example in a video where we covered like the caps and the floors. So here we are able to price the caps using the risk neutral uh, pricing measure, right? Uh, risk neutral uh, in, in the risk neutral world. So in, in, in this example, what we will do, it will price the same couplet, but by changing the measure from the risk neutral world to the forward measure and see that the price we find exactly the same price for the couplet, which is two over 21. So Let's go ahead now and price this uh, using the four measure. So now we can, before we start the pricing, let's just note a few things that we have found before. So we have proved, shown, show, we have shown this relation before, um, from the risk, not, from how to go from the risk neutral world pricing to the four rate, four uh, measure pricing. We have shown. Uh, we reminding us ourselves here what was the random Nicodin derivative, uh, random Nicodin random variable that we used, and this is the relationship uh, to find this uh, uh, forward measure, right? And then what we want to do, we want to price the couplet that's paying at time three. So naturally, by using risk neutral measure pricing, it's simply this expression here, and then we can now use uh, the relation that that we found before. To define uh, the, the the same pricing, but under the forward measure three, right? And not that uh, so the forward measure that for that you would use is always the forward measure at the time where you're receiving the uh, the, the the cash flow. If there was a cap that was paying at time five, five, then naturally it would be interesting in doing this under the four, five year forward measure, right? And instead of B03, we'll have B05. So that's that. So now let's try to find the elements that we need to be able to price it using this uh, this way. So first, um, remember, under all states, we know what the recent type priority uh, is, right? So we can have a lot of that. We have computed before the discount, uh, the discount factor for D3. And we were able also to price the, we know how to price a zero coupon bond that paying $1 at time three. So we find the values here. And not that uh, the values of the zero coupon bonds are not random, right? Because today, if you go in a market, we know how much we need to spend to buy uh, the bond, right? So it's not random. So no matter what the alcohol of the coin toss is, we we'll always get the same number. And we've priced this to find it was four over five, uh, four over seven. Okay, so now our next step is we need to f uh, compute this random this random recording variable, right? And that is just very simply the ratio of this D3, right? With respect to uh, B03, right? This is just this formula essentially that we're using very simply. So this three over four is n nothing but three over seven divided by four over seven. Naturally, the sevens cancel out. And what we get, we left with this 3 over 4. That's where it's coming from. And here, for example, this one is just because we have 4 over 7 divided by the exact 4 over 7. Okay, so now we know the random Nicodem variable. We're going to use this to generate now 
the forward measure probabilities all right and to do that we have shown we just need to take this uh, random decoding variable and then multiply that by the risk neutral uh, probabilities pretty much so we need to take this z and then multiply it by uh, the risk neutral probabilities and we get essentially this number so here we have 2 over 9 that we're dividing that we're multiplying with a uh, if I three with three over four, we get one over six. Exactly. So maybe we can just try to write that down or <laughs> to convince ourselves. Two divided by nine multiplied by three three divided by four. Okay, so this this cancel out, we have two here and we have a one. This becomes a one. And we have a 3 here. So we have 1 over 3 multiplied by 1 over 2. That's exactly this 1 over 6. Okay, so it, it makes sense what we have here. All right, and this 1 over 8 is nothing but this 1 multiplied by this 1 over 8 here. Okay, so that's how we get to move from... Uh, that's how we get to generate these uh, probabilities in the forward measure. Okay, now we have our forward measure. Naturally, now we can have uh, we can build the tree again, right? So before we just need we know the terminal probabilities. These are now changed to be the pro the uh, the probabilities under the forward measure, the three years forward forward measure, and we have shown that if we know essentially these guys, we can generate the transitional transition. Uh, the transition probabilities from one state to the, to the next and then we have our entire new tree we have the entire new tree now you can actually price uh, zero coupon anything you want also on this as well okay so now let's try to see uh, uh we know what b03 is we know its value and we can try to find we just need to take this and multiply it by its expected value uh under this under this uh, uh, measure so using expected value using these probabilities here so we know r2 uh, r2 we know the value of the interest rate under each states and then so we just computed this expression here we find all these zeros so that means now if you want to find uh, uh, the price of this couplet we just need to take our b03 this guy right we're going to find a separate value so we multiply by uh, uh, what we have here so we have 4 over 7 multiplied by 2 over 3 and then we're taking the probabilities multiply 1 over 6 okay so that's what we have here so the first expression here right is basically well this 4 over 7 is nothing but this guy and to compute the expectation, we just take the probability. So one of the probabilities is 2 over 3. So we have our 2 over 3 here. That we're multiplying with uh, 1 over 6, right? Multiplying by this 1 over 6. So that's this first expression here. And now we need to take the probability again. So the 1 over 12, which is the probability over here. And then we multiply it by this 2 over 3. And so this is where this expression is coming. This is uh, this is that's where these numbers are coming from. And then we just do some algebra to find this is this two over twenty one. So we find the exact same number as in the previous slide, right? That we uh, for for the couplet and the previous slide that's what we were using risk neutral pricing. And now here we did it by using uh, for for rate pricing basically pricing under the four hour measure. And that's pretty much uh, basically the uh, the end of this example. Hopefully that uh, that makes sense.